so I've successfully converted this old pickup truck alternator into a motor. Uh, let me show you how I did this. If you didn't know so already, an alternator is really just a three-phase motor with a three-phase rectifier to output direct current. What I'm going to do is take the alternator apart so that I can remove the diode pack and expose the stator windings. The alternator that I'm using is off of a 4.6 liter Ford F-150. The only reason I chose this alternator is because it only cost me $20 and it was still in fairly good condition. The first thing that I did was remove the three bolts that hold the alternator together and then remove the brush assembly from the back of the alternator. This will be used later on to apply a voltage to the rotor windings. After that, I removed the back of the housing and then cut the stator windings loose from the diode pack before completely removing it. At this point, I had six pairs of wires coming from the stator windings. Now, depending on the alternator you are using, you may only have three or four sets of wires coming from the stator windings rather than six, like I have. If you have four sets of wires, the alternator is three-phase Y connected, and if you have three sets of wires, the alternator is three-phase delta connected. In order to use an alternator as a motor, it will need to be wired in either a Y or delta configuration. A three-phase alternator stator consists of three windings. For example, windings A, B, and C. Now, because I'm in a situation where I have six pairs of wires coming from the stator windings, I don't know which wires are the ends of winding A, or which wires are the ends of windings B and C. To figure this out, I used the continuity check function on my multimeter and labeled the wires accordingly. At this point, I could go ahead and wire the alternator in a delta configuration. After I was finished, I covered the solder joints with heat shrink and then fed the wires through the back of the housing before bolting it back together. If your alternator is already wired in a wire delta configuration, all you have to do is extend the wires outside of the housing. The last thing that I had to do was solder a wire on each of the brushes and then fasten the brush assembly back into place. And that's it, the modification is now complete. I'm running the motor at 48 volts with the lead acid battery pack from my electric go-kart. I also have 12 volts connected to the rotor windings. The controller that I'm using is a 48 volt, 1500 watt brushless controller that works with both censored and sensorless motors. You need to make sure you're using a controller that works with sensorless motors in order to make this work. I also purchased this new foot throttle, which will replace the old one that I made out of a hand throttle and some 3D printed parts. On top of that, I got some new rear wheels, which I'll be installing as well. So anyways, here's a little montage of me doing all that.
right, so the batteries are all charged up, and I'm going to attempt to drive the go-kart until the batteries are drained. So let's see how much riding time I can get with this motor. I got the go-kart to a top speed of 37 kilometers per hour and I was able to ride the go-kart for exactly 10 minutes straight until I started smelling something burning, which turned out to be one of the lead acid batteries. My 12 amp hour lead acid pack has a seven minute maximum discharge current of 36 amps and a 30 minute maximum discharge current of 24 amps. The controller that I'm using has a maximum current output of 45 amps, so it's safe to say that I most likely over discharged the batteries after a specific amount of time. I did have a 40 amp fuse installed, so I know that I wasn't discharging anything over 40 amps continuously. Sounds like I need a more powerful battery pack. Well, I can tell you, I'm going to be making my own battery pack out of 18650 lithium ion cells for my electric drift trike series. That's right, I'm building an electric drift trike. What's nice is I'll be able to swap the lithium pack between both the go-kart and the drift trike. I will be revisiting this project and doing a comparison of the motor wired in a Y configuration versus the motor wired in a Delta configuration. But in the meantime, make sure you're subscribed so you can stay tuned for the Drift Trike build. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.